Imagine if OBS Studio could react to what's happening in your game. For example, I usually tell live streamers, hey, try to switch to your full screen, just chatting scene in between games. Because when you're playing competitive games, it gets pretty intense, you get focused. So it's good to ease the tension when you're in the lobby and give your chat your full undivided attention. Now, this is a concept video. So today we're going to figure out how to do this automatically. As soon as you're back into the lobby, OBS will switch scenes by itself. And of course, it doesn't stop there. The possibilities are endless. Maybe it could resume the music that you were playing before the match. Maybe you want some stuff to happen when you're low on health in game, when you get your ultimate in game, anything really. Again, concept video, I'm gonna keep it simple. A quick message from our sponsor and then we can begin. And today's sponsor is Own Pro. I talked about Own Pro before, but today I wanna show you something that you can create for yourself in just a couple of minutes. It's just one of many options that Own Pro offers. So I want you to go to own.gg slash pro. That's my special link. I want you to log in. If you don't have an account yet, you can log in with your Twitch account, okay? And I wanna show you what you can do with a free account. To the left, you wanna go to Scene Builder. You wanna click on Complete Setup, Automatic Selection, then just hover around and find something that you enjoy. We're gonna stick to the free category and you're gonna see that the overlays are actually available in like nine languages. Anyway, so we're gonna click on it once, then we're gonna click on Create Scenes. It actually also offers you an alert box. You can click this, now enter your social links, and guess what? Your whole setup is complete. You have your starting soon screen, your ending scene, your BR back scene, your general overlay for like gameplay and stuff, and you even have an intermission scene. Starting soon scene is gonna look like this. You can modify it, move things around, do whatever you want. Intermission scene looks like this. You can also use it as a gameplay scene. Now, all you have to do from there is basically click the link and add them as browser sources in your OBS and you're good to go. And that was just one of many things that Own Pro offers. I'll let you check it out over at own.gg slash pro. That is own3d.gg slash pro. Now I have to start by shouting out Mr. Greggles here because that's who I got the idea from. Anything I'm gonna show you today, I didn't know were possible until I watched this stream where he showcased it during our big raid train stream organized by Finite Singularity. Anyways, I'll put a link in the description. Go give him a follow. Absolutely deserved. So what we're going to use today is called the Advanced Scene Switcher. I don't know if you remember, but I made a video about setting up an automated podcast and using this plugin, I basically told it, hey, if I'm speaking, switch to my scene where you can see me. If my guest is speaking, switch to their scene. And we're gonna be using the same principles today. Once you have it installed, you will find it under the tools menu here and click advanced scene switcher. So under general, you can figure out if it's active or not. You can stop and start it here. And macros is where you're gonna create your macros. Now, the whole setup is pretty much just like OBS Studio. So plus is to create a new macro, call it what you want and then edit macro here. And then the top part is going to be if, you know, the condition, the bottom part is what to do if it encounters that condition. So I'm gonna click plus here. It's gonna give me the if, but you know, it can also be if not. <laughs> By default, it's set to scene. So it's like, hey, if this is the current scene or if the previous scene was, anyways. What we're interested in is video, but you can already see all the, the options that you have. If your cursor is somewhere, if your audio is hitting this level, uh, if the date is this, no, I haven't tested them all because wow, but hopefully I'll make more projects about this. So we want video. So if video here, we're going to have the option between OBS main output, a source or a scene. In our case, we're going to pick a source. Now, what source do you want? In my game scene, I'm capturing Overwatch right now. So I want the source to be my game capture. I'm going to find it here. Game capture. The next option is exactly matches, does not match, has not changed, change. I'll put what we want is matches pattern. You can use exactly matches, but it, it makes things a little too complicated. So let's go with matches pattern. And then finally here we can click browse and it will ask you to use an existing file. Basically, if you already had a screenshot of the game or a part of the game that you want to recognize, but you can also create a screenshot. Simply pick where you want it to go. And in your game, we can go to exactly where you want it to detect. For example, here, that's the main, main lobby of the game. I can call this main lobby. We're most likely going to override it. If you hover over browse, it will show you what the screenshot is like. And it took it before, so I'm gonna click on it again, create screenshot, name it the same and just override it. Let me make that bigger. 
So here there's a threshold and it tells you that the higher threshold basically means that the pattern needs to match the video source more closely. So it's going to be more meticulous when it comes to detecting what you're looking for. Now this is a little CPU intensive so you can reduce the CPU load by performing check only every so you can put a delay between the times that it's checking because otherwise it's constantly checking. I advise you turn this on and then something that I like to do is perform check only in area. So don't look at the whole picture, look at specific parts. You know, look at signs that were somewhere. <laughs> if you click select area here, it will give you that video feed and you can pick where you want to choose. For example, in Overwatch, I know that my name is most likely going to be here only when I'm in the lobby. So I can select this, just click and drag and then close it. But here's the thing. This would actually not work <laughs> because you have to go back again into browse. Click create screenshot. Give it the name main lobby, override it. And now it will accurately create a screenshot of what you selected. All right. Keep that in mind. Bottom here, you can sh click show match. So this is the video feed and it will tell you up top full image matches the pattern. So is my game capture currently displaying what I'm looking for? Yes. Now we can move on to, hey, what to do, what to do. <laughs> I'm going to go bottom here. I'm going to click plus It's going to give me switch scene by default. But of course, you can make it do whatever, whatever. <laughs> And it says switch program to scene and the scene is going to be full screen. So when you detect this, bring me to the full screen because I'm in the lobby using I'm going to put current transition and there you go. I like to turn this on run macro in parallel to other macros. Not completely sure <laughs> if I should, but I turn it on here. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this macro. I'm going to right click on it I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call it macro two and this is going to be the gameplay. So when I'm in game, what do you want to do? Since it's a duplicate, we need to modify everything. I'm going to put myself in the practice range. OK, and now we're going to start by selecting the area because we have a different screen here and we can select this part, for example, close that. And remember, take another screenshot. We're going to click create screenshot. I'm going to call this one PR for a practice range and click save. Now, what do we want it to do in this case? If I'm in the practice range, that means that I'm in game switch to game right there. I'm on a single monitor, so you're going to have to bear with me here. When you're ready, you can go ahead and click in general here and then start the whole advanced scene switcher. Click start. And as you can see, it just detected that I was in the practice range and switched automatically. Now, what happens if I go back to the lobby? I'm going to leave game and go pop pop and switch fast and see what it does. Oh, it already. <laughs> It already switched me. I didn't even have time. So uh, so it's working. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's do it again. So if I click play and I go training and I go practice range, I can alt tab here to see it happening in real time. Come on. Come on. OK, now it's not working. How do you troubleshoot it if it doesn't work? Right. What I like to do is basically make sure that it's not thinking that it's seeing the lobby at all times. We're clearly in the practice range right now. So what's up? So in my macro one, I'm going to scroll down, click show match, and it says full image matches the pattern. That's not true. So what we're going to do is bump up the threshold a little bit. I like to set it to 0 0.9 and basically play around with it until it tells you, hey, this doesn't match what I'm looking for. Still says that it matches the pattern. Also, always check your screenshot. My screenshot looks like this, so there's no way. So we can bump it up even more. And now it says pattern was not found. And that's what you want. Let's go back to macro two. We see that full image matches the pattern. That's good, but we're still going to bump it up so that it doesn't confuse it with uh, the other one. 0.93 seems good. Sometimes it takes a while to get it going, but once you have it done, it should be good. Click start again. I stopped it and then started it. And sometimes you have to go back and just like click browse, create screenshot and do it again. But right now it just switched automatically. So let's go back to the lobby. Boom. And it over. I don't know when it switches, but it switches as soon as basically that top right part appears, which is working so well, so well that I don't have the time to, <laughs> to actually catch it. Let's go to the training again. What? OK, it worked, but it worked so well that I'm a little surprised Man, I wish I had two screens right now. Let's do this and that. Come on. Yes. OK, you see it. <laughs> you actually see it happen. <laughs> but then practice range. 
and you see it happen too. Now, here's the thing. Right now, it's actually switching as soon as it doesn't really see the pattern. It's not doing a great job at really detecting that specific part, but it's doing such a great job at detecting the first one that this is fine. If that's the only two scenes that you have for those specific things, because remember that if not is also an option. Basically, hey, if you don't see my name top right, that means I'm in game. OK, yeah, that's the whole thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> that's not that, that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, so on top of switching scenes, you can also make it do more stuff. I haven't played around it too much, but and you can make it play a specific media source. Oh, there's screenshot. So imagine you can have it so that every time you win a battle royale game and you have that victory screen, it takes a screenshot. Every time you show your stats, it could take a screenshot. There's audio. You can make it mute, change the volume of certain sources, set audio monitoring. If you want to hear yourself in certain scenes and not, you can automate all of that. If you're doing a subathon, you can pause a timer automatically, depending on which scene you are or what's going on in the game. And keep in mind, I say what's going on in the game, but it's also because, you know, the first option here we had was a uh, source here, but there's also OBS main output. So you can control OBS yourself and have it react to what you are displaying. For example, I don't know if that makes sense. For example, you can have a screenshot of a fully funded donation goal and have it perform actions once you reach the goal. All right, I think that's enough. I think that's enough <laughs> to explain the whole principle of using advanced scene switcher to react to your gameplay and do stuff automatically. Yes, there's a little bit of tinkering. It's not as plug and play as I would like it to be. But again, if it wasn't for Mr. Greggles, I wouldn't have any idea that I have a plugin that's already in my OBS that can do that kind of stuff. If you end up using this to make some cool stuff, post it on Twitter and tag me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. In the meantime, go follow me on Twitch, go out there, make me proud, get level, out.